Hello friends, welcome to BSC Agriculture. If you are coming to my channel for the first time, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Your subscription and likes are always motivating us. So let's move to the video. In this video, we are going to see about fundamentals of biochemistry. I am going to teach you unit 4 and the lecture topic is, I am going to cover two lectures. The first two lecture is lipid metabolisms. So I am going to teach you about lipids, phospholipids, beta oxidation of fatty acids as, as well as the bioenergetics from lipids. And also the second lecture is biosynthesis biosynthesis of fatty acids and triacylglycerols so let's move to the lecture so i can be able to give a simple introduction about lipid metabolism so they are mainly used to comprise of beta oxidation of fatty acids as well as the biosynthesis of fatty acids and triglycerols are mainly comes under lipid metabolism so we must need to about what are lipids they are nothing but the fat storage compounds so they are mainly made up of triacylglycerols which is we can be able to call it as triglycerides so which is mainly stored in the adipose tissue of the human cells so they mainly constitute about 80 percent of the storage energy and uh, the remaining is protein used to obtain about 15 percentage of energy and the remaining is carbohydrates which is glucose and glycogen which is less than one percentage of stored energy in the living body so it's the digestive system where, where the fat ingested into the diet as well as the bile juice used to emulsify and the intestinal lipase used to de degrade triacylglycerides and uh, how the further process of composition used to take place and the final of fatty acids are oxidized as fuel are re-estered for storage in the mycot or apitocyte tissue it was what I shown in this picture so I am going to first tell you about the release of fatty acids from triacylglycerides. So when the triacylglycerides are said to be entered into the digestive system, the first active enzyme which used it to act on triacylglycerides is lipase. So when they acted on triacylglycerides which is converted into glycerols with the release of acids which is um, ROCOH groups based on the numbers. Uh, so it's how the action enzymes so insulin where the hormone adenine glycogen acetic th used to act as a receptor and activates uh, atp synthesis and active lipases are used to act on triacylglycerols so insulin which blocks the steps of activates of activation of lipase in the adipose tissue of cells so when the triacylglycerols are converted to glycerol plus fatty acids they are mixed in the blood which is transferred for all the cells of our body through blood for the energy so after that i am going to tell you about the action of phospholipids so while seeing the phospholipids the phospholipases are used to act on the bond between carbon and oxygen so it's how i have sh shown the simple reaction at how the phospholipid a1 a2 as well as c and d are used to act upon act upon the substrates so while describing the particular one of phospholipid a as the first one which is uh, present in large amount in snake venom as well as in human pancreas so so it is said to be designated as phospholipase a1 so they use it to catalyze mainly the hydrolysis of fatty acids in the two or beta portion of the phospholipids so which is mainly attacked on glycerophosphatides mm, fairly specific on phosphatidylene choline groups which is nothing but the lecithin as well as they are used to be relatively stable to heat when they are below the pH of 7 degrees Celsius 7 which is below the neutral pH which means acidic pH as well as the product of hydrolysis of phospholipids are mainly used to give lysolithin which is the monophosphoryl choline as well as the powerful Hemoctyl hemolytic activity is said to be done by the phospholipase A during the hydrolysis process. So after that, which is phospholysis B, uh, or else we can be able to cause, uh, call it as phospholipase A2, where they are said to be termed as lysophospholipase. So based on their name, they are as widely distributed in nature, often in associated with the uh, phospholipase A. So they are used to designated as phospholipase A or else uh, lysophospholipase. Since 
it is used to act on the lysolysthin which is a product obtained by the phospholipid by the action of phospholipid a where the remaining is to use it to act tagged or activated on phospholipids a2 so the action of enzymes following that the phospholipid a yields glycerophosphocholine as the final product in this process so after that um, i am going to tell you about the phospholipid c which is mainly found in the plant kingdoms and uh, which is also some uh, present in some of the animal tissues and venoms so while seeing the character the phospholipid c used to catalyze 1,2 digesyl glycerol as well as the phosphoryl choline from phosphody tetyl choline uh, which is liberated from the liberation so the phosphoryl choline is um, also liberated from the sphingomyelin by this enzyme known as phospholipid c so and the final one is which is phospholipase d which is said to be an enzyme described mainly present in the plants so they are used used mainly for the catalysis the hydrolysis of choline from phosphodiethyl choline leaving the phosphodiethyl acid so it's how the phosphoryl phase d occurs so after the completion of phospho lipid acid reaction we are going to see about beta oxidation so beta oxidation is nothing but the breakdown of fatty acids to acetyl choline a units the which is we can also term it as the glycolysis of fatty acids so they are strictly aerobic in nature and uh, which is mainly occurs in the mitochondria of each and every cells and so acetylcholine is uh, directly fed into the krebs cycle as the process which is completed uh, on glucose in glycolysis so it's how the reaction used to occur so the fatty acids uh, used to combine with the amp in the presence of atp used to where the phosphorus powerful high energy phosphorus is used to release it and uh, adenosine monophosphate is combined with uh, the group as well as um, after that they use it to form a coah compound in the process in the presence of h hydrosulfur co hcoa and uh, adenosine monophosphate is reduced it's how the fatty acid coa is produced so the total process we can able to term it as fatty acid coa synthesis so while preparing a fatty acid for transport and metabolism fatty acid coa is said to be the compound you can use it as well as the transport into mitochondria depends on the catenitin which is an important compound so the fatty acid coa is used to activated by catenitin and used to form fatty acid catenitin um, and the hcoa compound is released so i have given the structural form of catenitin it's how the reaction is formed and they use it to move through a translocase solution and a facetal catenitin which is a translocase is the membrane found on the mitochondria and um, catenitin is it to be removed by hcoa compound in the mitochondria and catenitin is re released and acetyl transferase 2 is it to be formed and um, it is said to be a re reversible process and uh, where the real beta oxidation used to occur where the 8 carbon fatty acid acetyl coa is said to be broken down in each process so they are used to be broken down into four two carbon acetyl coas for easy oxidation in this process so the mechanism is they use it to have a cut at the beta center the enzymes are used to be activated and each one the beta the cells are used to be cut and the dehydrogenase and hydrate and the dehydrogenase as well as acetyl transferase are used to act upon the fatty acid coa in this process so the cofactor of substrate are fad and h2o in the hydratase and nad plus in during the dehydrogenase second dehydrogenase as well as hcoa in the final one acetyl co acetyl transferase so these are the cofactor substrate used to formed in the fatty acid decomposition so i have shown that in the animated form in the before picture so it's how the total fatty acid activation used to occur 
so the first fatty acid is converted to first acetyl coa so to pass through the inner mitochondria they are used to have a carnitine transport system it's what i have shown in the picture so after that they used to uh, be a reacted by dehydrogenase in the presence of acetyl coa dehydrogenase and used to form beta unsaturated acetyl coa hydration and used to be reduced and used to form the final one of fatty acid coa and acetyl coa is the final products in this whole process so it's how the process used to occur and uh, repeated sequence are used to be formed for the four two carbon acetyl coa coa compounds so after that the energy is stored the energy story so after the oxidation process is complete we must need to know about how the how much energy is to be formed so the energy formed in glucose is so 2813 kJ per mole as well as 672 kcal per mole or we can term it as 3.74 kcal per gram of glucose energy is said to be released and in stearic acid the energy is 11441 kJ per mole or else we can term it as 2737 kilo uh, kcal per mole mole or else uh, 9.64 kcal per gram of stearic acid the energy is formed so basically the on a per mole basis typically fatty acid is four time more energy richer than that of typical hexose so it's what it's saying is so the fatty acids are used to give four times much energy than glucose which is typically hexose so one glucose is equal to 3.7 kcal as well as 1 gram of stearic acid gives 9.7 kcal per her so the energy conservation in stearic acid is 9 acetyl coa is equal to 108 atp as well as 8 fadh2 16 atp as well as nad 8 nadh2 24 atp so total of 148 atps are used to be conserved in the stearic acid formation and uh, so minus 1 atp which is activated during its uh, chemical process at the first step and uh, in palmitic acid they used to form 108 atp 108 atps as the final one so we must need to go a yeah, just a uh, small recall of beta oxidation after the five cycles of total completion they used to enter into the six in acted with sectional coa and enters into the tca cycle which is nothing but a citric acid cycle where i explained in the before lecture videos so after the beta oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids they used to go of beta oxidation of three cycles and um, continuation of beta oxidation they used to form an isom trans isomerase compound which is trans compound is formed in unsaturated fatty acid and the beta oxidation used to be continued so the oxidation process of unsaturated fatty acids or we must need to know it's how the 6 hexo decanyl coa is used to be act and uh, acted and um, cis power 3 uh, decanyl coa and trans decanyl coa and beta hydroxyl acetyl coa which is the normal substrate of beta oxidation used to act upon unsaturated fatty acids and used to form a five acetyl coa where the beta oxidation of mono unsaturated fatty acids is how the process occur so now we are going after the completion of total synthesis as well as beta oxidation in fatty acids now we are going to see about fatty acid biosynthesis so fatty acid synthesis we must need to get some intro about the fatty acid synthesis versus degradation so in synthesis they are used to have a linkage between sh and protein groups which is acyl carrier proteins or else we can term it as coenzyme substrates which is you know used as in products as well as in degradation they are used to linked with coash compound and in sites they are used to have a synthesis of cytosol and uh, the degradation process takes place in mitochondria and the enzymes is the components of single peptides and uh, separate polypeptides are used in the degradation process so the redox coenzymes are usually found in the synthesis or nad plus as well or nadh dph 
and in degradation is, which is NAD plus or NADH degradation. So while seeing an intro about fatty acid biosynthesis, they are mainly used to occur in cytosol as well as the starts with the acetyl COA. But the major problems in fatty acid biosynthesis are most of the acetyl COA are produced only in mitochondria. So acetyl COA unable to transpose mitochondrial membrane. So that's why the cysteine compound is used to be attached only for transfer of that compound. So it's what I have already told the glycolysis process used to take place on the acetyl COA where the citrate used to help them uh, for the transfer of the permeable membrane in mitochondrial mitochondria. So after the transfer the fatty acid biosynthesis where the formation of melanin COA where the real process used to occur. So CH3 COS COA plus ATP plus HCO3 where the compound used to be activated with acetyl CO carboxylase is used to act upon them and used to form melanyl CO compound with uh, the release of adenosine diphosphate with phosphorus ion plus HP which is said to be a committed step in fatty acid synthesis which where the reaction is fully reversible and the fatty acid biosynthesis where the role of acetyl carrier proteins are used to occur so CH3 COS COA where the acetyl transfer used to be acted and the acetyl ACP is formed and uh, O2 C CH2 COS COA where the malonyl compound transferase is used to be acted and malonyl ACP is used to form so ACP is nothing but the acetyl carrier protein which is used for the transfer of the fatty acid groups so after we are going to see about acetyl COA from acetyl C ACP so after that compound produced from the last reaction they use it to be acted by beta keto acyl ACP synthetase and use it to form acetyl ACP plus with the release of carbon dioxide in this process so the acetyl ACP used to form the butyl ACP where the beta keto acyl ACP reductase as well as the beta hydroxyl ACP dehydrogenase and trans adol ACP reductase are used to be acted upon acetyl ACP and used to give the final product as butyl ACP in this fatty acid biosynthesis. So I have given the whole product in a single picture where the first one is uh, the fatty acid COA is used to where the acetyl COA is said to be con con acted with the ACP acetyl, um, a acetyl carrier proteins so they are acted and used to form malonyl CO is as similar to that used to act with the ACP acetyl carrier proteins and used to form acetyl ACP as well as malonyl ACP after that they used to go for the reactions with the beta acyl ACP synthetase beta acyl ACP beta butyl ACP so beta hydroxyl ACP dehydrogenase and the enonyl ACP reductase so after that butyl ACP the final product which is gone for the oxidation process is said to be done it's the total biosynthesis of fatty acids so after the fatty acids synthesis the sources of NADPH are said to be done in pentose phosphate pathway and the malic acid enzyme where the NADP and NADPH formation are said to be formed in between glucose 6-phosphate to ribose 5-phosphate where the intermediate is 6 phosphogluconate and in malic acid enzyme the malic, malic is where the only one NADP plus is converted to NADPH so the malic acid where the CO2 is released and used to form pyruvate in this compound so it was the long chain of biosynthesis of unsaturated fatty acids so while seeing in the simple form the palimate which is a 16 carbon compound where after desaturation or well as elongation and further desaturation and they used it to form uh, alpha linoate where the 18-3 compound is produced or else they use it to form arachidonate which is the biosynthesis of long chain and unsaturated fatty acids it's how the process used to usually occurs so while seeing about the fatty acid biosynthesis, the chain elongation continuation, so the palimate, it's how they compound the fatty acids are used to be 
go and uh, aster acps are used to go for 5c acps and uh, palimotyl acp is said to be formed and the palimate fatty acid is performed or else found as the final product so after the further processing of fatty acids where the unsaturation the sterile coa desaturation usually occurs and used to form oleacyl coa where they are mainly usual in eukaryotes where the endoplasmatic reticulum membrane is responsible for this unsaturated fatty acid reaction and the further processing of fatty acid polyunsaturation in plant they are further unsaturation occurs primarily in this region and in fact animals they are uh, unsaturation also occurs during in the right side region of the oleic acid so they used to essential dietary in the fatty acids of mammal is linoleic acid we must need to remember so after that we are going to see about the unsaturated fatty acids this is uh, it's how the linoleic coa is converted to alpha linoleic in the presence of desaturate and the elongation in ear and dihomo are gamma linoleic coa is produced and arachidyl coa is formed in pufa synthesis so while seeing the synthesis of phosphatic acid so dihydroxyacetone phosphatase uh, from glycolysis where the compound is converted to phosphatic acid or else the glycerol which is converted to phosphatic acid to several reactions and diacyl glycerol important in cell signaling where they are acted by diacyl glycerol acyl transferase and the final pump compound of triacyl glycerol is produced through the process of phosphatic acid and the biosynthesis of triacyl glycerols where the phosphatic acid synthesis dhcap the glycerol is converted to g3p or else monoacyl glycerol 3 phosphate and the by the action of acyl transferase from g3p and the final pros- product phosphatic acid is uh, obtained by acyl transferase compound and uh, the triacyl glycerol synthesis it's how the triacyl glycerol the phosphatic acid is the primary compound by the action of phosphatic acid phosphate and acyl transferase the triacyl glycerol is used to be formed so i have given the total product formation of glycerol where the glycerol is converted to g3p as i already told and uh, after that 1acyl 3 glycerol 3pa and it 1,2 diacyl glycerol is to be formed after that 1,2 diacyl glycerol the triacyl glycerol is formed by diacyl glycerol acyl transferase where the biosynthesis of triacyl glycerol usually occurs so i have completed these two lectures i have given the lecture notes in the description if you description so if you have any doubts please comment in the section and if you like the video like it and share it with your friends and subscribe to bsc agriculture and hit the bell icon to get regular updates so thanks for watching the video thank you i will catch you up in next videos